There we go. And now we want to welcome everybody to dun da da dun da da dun 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 the mad scientists tea party. That's right. This is your public access URTV Mad Scientist Tea Party. You got it. Yeah, come on down. Have a cup of tea. Listen to a little bit of my murky audio. <laughs> no, you're listening to. Did he say supposed man side? Bad side? I don't know. This is an extension of Anarchy Television right here on on public access. You are a public access station. Oh, yes, yes, here you go. One URTV staple fe- features a supposed mad scientist and his friends at w- weekly tea parties. Uh huh. Seated at the head of a lengthy table, surrounded by casual acquaintances, accomplices. Accomplices? Accomplices. Well, they got your number, don't they? They never wander in and out of the frame. The host directs the banter as well as blue screen displaying psychedelic patterns. Oh, we forgot the psychedelic patterns. Let's put some psychedelic patterns up, shall we? (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. I've got your, you know, you want to do your backyard. You have a, you have like a little tea garden in your backyard or something, Yeah, don't you? I do. I've got a Japanese garden back there. Okay. You want to, can you find uh, the, the one that has that on it? Yeah. I don't know. That I have two in that white thing. I don't know if that, I don't think that's you. Uh, do you have two in here? Yeah. Because that might be in, it might in be. there. Yep. Okay. Okay, we'll see. We'll, we'll we'll just have ourselves a little bit of. Uh, okay, and so furthering the review here about mm-hmm. your TV. Right. The murky audio is matched by the rambling conversation, mm-hmm. which seems to lack any particular topic. Mm-hmm. Well. That's us. That's kind us. Of I can't not th- any kind of planned thing. Uh huh. Rambling conversation. That that I mean, that's it, that's he's, he's got our number. I can't, yeah. I can't complain about the rambling, rambling conversation. Brent, you're right. Come on down and join us. We have great but, tea. But I, I told I told the other people. I said the uh, the most commonly I'm I'm accustomed to the to hearing the term uh, not rambling, but 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 uh, most people when they describe my show to me they they use the term riveting. That's the. <laughs> He well, he just got his R's wrong. He, he meant to say riveting. <laughs> he didn't say rivet. He didn't use that one. He used the rambling one. He meant to say riveting, but he messed up. I want to rambling. get to the one to the picture that I love. Oh, that's a good one. Though, wait a minute, wait a minute. By the time I get there, it'll be gone. There. Now, let's see if I can catch that. Huh? No. Oh, well, that's not bad. I'm going to go back to the one I like. Can you can you reverse it? I can. There. How's that? No. Wait a minute. Oh. Oh, I like that. There. Mm, that's yeah, not the that's one I wanted. Japanese that's garden. not the one I wanted, though. I wanted this one, wasn't it? Uh, that one. Oh, that's the front of Herb's house. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. I like that one very much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he wanted a real tropical look in front of his. Oh, well, he's got one. Yeah. Yeah. It looks better. It looks better actually in the full frame than it does on our, on our little, uh, yeah, in our little good. frame, you know. But I think that all this stuff jittering and all just drives people crazy watching that. You think it doesn't? I don't know. Well, since I don't watch it at home, uh-huh. you just because watch I it don't here. have access to. Uh, okay, and this is camera? the other one I like. But see, it doesn't, it doesn't show. You see what I mean? But I like well, that. Well, it doesn't a lot. have a lot of contrast back there at the top. It's just kind of like a little gray sky. Okay. There we go. That's good. Yes. That's a, a little good rainforesty looking. Yeah. 
Yeah. Very nice setting for tea, don't you think? Mm -hmm. And you know, if we had that in the background and if we had a couple of flowers, a couple of plants maybe that we sat around in here, maybe in some of the areas where some of the vibrations are, it would be hard to tell where the backdrop stopped in the, and it would, Yeah, like right there, we could put a big potted plant in front of the, that table there. Like, mm-hmm. Right there? Yeah. Or behind me right here, put a big potted plant right there. There we go. Good enough, huh? Oh, here that, comes oh, a potted here, plant. Here, here Yay, that's exactly what we need. Over right here. Over here. here. Over here behind me. She wants it over there behind her. <laughs> Look at this. Here, ask, here it comes ask and you shall receive. receive. You'll, you'll, okay. Potted plant. You might, yeah. Yes. Scoot it over behind you, see how far you can get it. There <laughs> you go. Look at that. And you'll be you'll be in the plant. Yes, there. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> in the garden. We're in the well, garden. In the garden. <laughs> so what, what, what it looks like? Is it showing the other camera? Oh, a little bit. Look at that. It shows mm -hmm. a little bit on the other camera. Yeah, that looks good. See, uh -huh. we can move it up some for that shot. Uh huh. There you go. Oh, look at that. <laughs> you can be like in the looking, pull it, pull like the, the looking through the plant. <laughs> yeah. There. Uh -huh. Okay. And then um, if we want to, we can move to that side. Oh, okay. yeah, I love that. There we go. There we go. Well, what, you've been, what have you been doing? I've been moving. Again? Yes. That's what, it's, the, it's the curse. Is that the story of your life? Currently, it is. It's the curse of the poor. Where, okay, where did you move to, and now where are you moving from to? Do you, okay, I mean, well, like, I moved from Donna's house. Oh, uh, did that not work out? No, it worked out very well. Donna told me when, when Donna let me come and stay in her guest room, uh -huh. which I did. Uh -huh. And she told me when I moved in that she would eventually need to rent it, mm -hmm. and and that it, you know I knew it wasn't permanent. It was just better than sleeping in my truck, you see. So I went and I stayed at Donna's house, which was lovely to be able to use her guest room for a pretty long period of time. But then she said, uh, I have a young couple will come in to look at the room to rent it. And so I had to move. And, and that's funny, huh? Okay. <laughs> they didn't want to share. I don't know. So, <laughs> so I had an invitation from Casey Waters. Got snacks? What do you got? No, 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 have you? No, but we do have no. some, we do have some good tea. Really? Well, go get us some snacks. We, really, we do have some good tea. Yeah, I had a, a little headache. I don't know if the tea would help it. I think it would. All right. Just hang out. Say hello for a while. There you go. Look at that. You're even on camera. Oh she, my! She, you look like Morticia Adams, in back in the plants somehow. <laughs> I like the plant there. Mm -hmm. It's a little greenery. Oh, and how's everyone this week? We're look, good. John's well. moving again. He was just telling okay. me the saga. But, but I, haven't, I haven't gotten to the punchline of the story, which is I have moved in with Casey Waters. Uh -huh. You know who Casey oh, Waters is? You've I seen love him. his show. Do you love his show? Yeah. He said some really uh, profound statements. Yes, last, he does. Uh, and I just said, wow. Uh-huh. You know? Uh -huh. uh, Casey has a... I was a, watching him Sunday or just, just this uh -huh. past week. Uh -huh. Casey, yeah. as you know, has a... Uh, um, he just moved, didn't he? He, he, just, he just moved, just, then he was talking about his he cat. Just he just moved not long, long ago, because yeah, yeah. he's getting ready to build a house, and and I think that I think the process of building a house has turned out to be longer than than he expected. I think that's a common story, yeah. you know. Uh, so anyway, so so he so he's had to rent a place to live <laughs> while he's building while he's his building. house. So that so uh, he and Judson moved into this. Uh, other house, it's very nice, and they had invited me when they lived in their other house to come and stay, and uh, Donna had invited me, and Donna's was in close to town, and, and I had lived at Donna's house before mm -hmm. years ago, and so I stayed there for a while, and then and then when that was running out, I was, you know, I was thinking, well, now am I going to be living in my pickup truck, or am I going to, uh, so yeah. I went out and checked with Casey Waters, and he said, yeah, come on, and Awesome. And, it, and it's wonderful out there. So we're 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 really a public access house. Our we're we're a public access family well, out there. Good. You know. Yeah. Did you see the article in the uh, 
Fountain Express about URTV. There it is. Mm -hmm. Thinking inside the box. The about, about the mad scientist. About the mad scientist. Murky, murky the audio. Supposed mad scientist. <laughs> supposed, supposed mad scientist. Come, come on down here, Mr. We, we, we've been challenging you, okay. <laughs> this guy to, to come down. Yeah, we invited him to come down with me. To, Wonderful. To see if he, if he can do better. I want to. I want to see. Well, I, I got the gist that it was a complimentary article, oh, and that oh, was yeah. very nice. Uh, uh, anytime you are in uh, Boston yeah. public ink, it's a good thing. So. All right. Right, but uh, oh, oh, we we like it, and I hope yeah. he doesn't mind us making fun of it. If he's nah. if he's seen the show before, maybe he knows what he's in for. <laughs> Sound like sounded like he was goading me to. to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he says um, that he meant he says it's rambling conversation. He meant to say riveting. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes forget letters. Is that the right time? Which one? The, the, the atomic clock? Yeah, I think so. Why? Wow. I'm late. For what? For a board meeting. Oh. Yeah. I thought they were at six or at five. They're six. Yeah. Well, I got I, I got to go to a place to meet and find a spot and. Um, but anyway, maybe I'll come back after the meeting if if it's a short meeting. Okay. Well, yeah. say tell everybody hey at the. I will. At the, maybe at, we'll have a TV. It's at, at the place, board so meeting. See, I should bring a little TV so we can watch. Them. Come come back and bring if they have it if they have anything they want you know announced or anything bring oh, back yeah. you know. Yeah, and bring yeah. back food if they. Yeah, why don't why yeah. you um, yeah. why don't you announce the meeting? Where's that? What time? If yeah. More interesting. If oh, I yeah. had the proper address, I'd do that offhand. Well, here does somebody know? What's it? <laughs> nobody. At B, this nobody at this BCTV? place. BCTV building, which is what is that? Right by the roundabout or whatever. BC it's at the BCT. TV. V. <laughs> Buncombe County. At six o'clock. What's that? Buncombe County. Television. television. Community television. Oh, there's. It's station. a new place, so uh, come on, if you're out there and you want to. Uh, so it's by the roundabout there. Yeah, by yeah you know where it's on the roundabout where there's that one government the building. Courthouse. Yeah. Uh huh. Where it's got the, always got like a sign like, "Hey, don't burn your leaves this month," or "Vote here," or find out more about this program. There's that like building with the windows in the front. Mm -hmm. Where oh, where it like usually it usually window. says. It says, it, I used to think it said something about the parks and recreation or, right. and vote early. Okay. That's the building. That's well, the building. Well, come on down then. Oh, okay. Thanks, John, for having me for a little bit. Well, and, um, I'm sorry I didn't have any, any... Oh, oh, did you get my email? At Habitat for Humanity, there was a Hammond organ for sale. Old, like, beautiful. Beautiful, like the ones uh -huh. that, that bands love to use. Did you get it? No, I couldn't afford it. Was it a B3? It was... Cool. Three tiers. You plug it in. It had woodwind. It had the orchestra, oh, the clarinets. Oh, you know, that's, that's uh, about this big. A Hammond. nice piece of furniture. Hammond. Hammond. It was a Hammond. Wow. It was 125 at Habitat for Humanity. They had a bigger one there, but this was the Hammond. This was the like nice. You know. Uh huh. I played a little bit, and then I had. A you think it's gone? Thing. You said they had. You don't know if it's gone. I no. stopped in Tuesday. Yeah. After this show, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> I would check it out because I think the Grove Park is getting rid of a lot of stuff and they're sending it down there. Uh -huh. There's a lot of antiques that come that way. But it was a beautiful organ. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, well, I, I hope got, you come back. Yeah. Thank you, you for dropping in. That's good. Well, I got a couple of wonderful, really heavy, beautiful Morris designed uh, bed spreads from the Grove Park Inn. Last week at the Habitat for Humanity mm. for twenty five dollars each, and they weigh about fifty pounds each. How many pounds? About fifty. Bed spreads. Yeah, I'm very heavy, very heavy fabric. Yeah. Nice fabric. And and I'm going to do, do curtains because you know in the winter time you put, hang a heavy are they like cloth a, uh, over your. Are they like it's a, like a tapestry? Are they like a heavy velvet? Is it no, it's like a it's like a ta more of a tapestry weave. Wow. And um. they, they had like three bins of them, king and queen and full. For think. how much a piece? Or? Twenty-five. Uh huh. Beautiful fabric. So fifty cents a pound. Just about. Uh huh. Uh, and not and and not what you would think of as coming out of a hotel, but it's coming well, except Park somewhere Inn really has swanky. An image. Has an image to upkeep, and so they have a little bit swankier stuff, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know the the story goes that back in the fifties they got rid of a lot of their stiffly furniture around town. People oh, were buying yeah. them for like those chairs that say as, GPI right, as you, as used furniture. Right. Yeah, as, we're as, like buying them for fifty cents each, and now now they have the antique show there uh -huh. with uh, Mission Furniture, and now uh -huh. a stickly. Chair is like 
five or six hundred dollars. Dollars, exactly. Right. So, so, okay, so you moved in with Casey Waters, and it's nice out there. It's fabulous. Is it in a certain area of town? It's uh, it's on the other side of Weaverville. I love that area. But it's in an old community. It, it's, it's an old... Uh, Do you ever go to that uh, wonderful coffee shop in downtown Weaverville? No. Big downtown no. Weaverville? No. They have eclairs about the size of it, and they look like a cow pie. <laughs> they're this big. <laughs> and they're real dark brown because they're eat, covered with chocolate. And you'll eat a whole one, will you? No, I can't possibly Do you eat, eat a whole one. one. Well... So we get one. I see Herb's father loved chocolate eclairs, and that was when they were like these little scrawny uh -huh. things about this long and about that big around. Uh -huh. Okay, so these are like about the size of this teapot. And so every time we go, we get one and we say, This one's for you, Dad, because uh -huh. he loved chocolate eclairs. Uh -huh. But they're the, uh, the, the uh, bread, the the, the dough. The dough around it is always really crisp and fresh and not soggy. And the filling is this wonderful cream, right, right. puddingy, custardy really, filling. Really, like real custard filling, something like that. Yeah, yeah, and there's about this much of it. Oh, God. So I eat just like a little piece like right there, and then Herb eats the rest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's gotten fat off of them. <laughs> We'll keep we'll keep this little piece of bit of tea in that pot for someone who comes. I could, I could I could put some more in there, but I've got two other full pots here. I think it'd be a little early to. Well, thank you so much for letting me have it because I loved it, and I'm gonna go get some. Because to me, there's nothing more wonderful than drinking flowers. It is good, isn't it? It's delicious. We'll, yeah, I love it. We're, well, we'll be doing more of it here on the show. So we so we've come up with a tea uh -huh. that's more to your liking. Oh. Well, all of it's to my liking. Okay. Well, I know, but you always bring yours. You like iced tea. I always bring my tea everywhere. Everywhere you go. Yeah. It's not just, don't take it personal. Oh, I know. It's I never not, do. It's not. Um, Other people bring it. Like, I don't even notice it. Other people bring it to my attention because they say, what she got in there? You know, and I say, well, I don't know. Usually <laughs> green tea and very often green tea with jasmine tea. Uh-huh. Right. But I have it everywhere. I always have some uh -huh. tea with me to drink. That's very Southern, isn't it? I just to have, to have, always am drinking to, have a, to take a little tea with organic you, you green know. tea uh -huh. Let's say, and maybe some jasmine in it too. Yeah. yeah yeah I'll tell you about jasmine I had a jasmine experience mm -hmm. in Coconut Grove uh -huh. which is which back in the this is a is this a riveting or a rambling conversation it's, it's sort of it's a, kind of riveting sort of a riveting raveting <laughs> raveting <laughs> sort of raveting is raveting rav, ravenous. A uh, rab, rab, rabbinous conversation, and in the um, the uh, in Coconut Grove, I was riding a bicycle, and this was many many years ago, and I was riding a bicycle, and I and I hit upon a block that had a whole lot of jasmine growing on that block, mm -hmm. and it was the the aroma was of the jasmine <laughs> was so thick that it actually felt like it slowed the bicycle down. It was like, ooh, it was like mm -hmm. thick, you, mm -hmm. do you know? Mm -hmm. And it was just like, and you, and for as long as I live, and I have a memory that works, I will probably never forget mm -hmm. the moment that I, that I rode my bicycle into the thickness of that jasmine. That's, you know, that's because when you smell uh, an aroma or something that really strikes you and it's a, real powerful experience and there's an aroma associated with it, mm -hmm. that makes it stick in your mind more. It does. It does. And it goes back to some of our early... Yeah, our early primal instincts it does, or, I think, or yeah. parts of the brain that mm -hmm. register. Like, um, mm -hmm. do you remember uh, when, when we were kids and there was a product called Tangy Lipstick? No. Well, it had a certain, it, it, it looked orange in the tube, and you put it on, and it would change colors to match your skin. Okay. And it had a certain smell to it, uh -huh. and it's unforgettable. It's an unforgettable aroma, mm -hmm. and then the look, and then, of course, if that was your first lipstick when you were a little girl, that was, I mean, I'm talking like way back, <laughs> way back. Right. And was this in South Carolina? 
No, this was in Florida. In Florida. Yeah, and the, mm -hmm. I think it was like the fifth grade that I remember mm -hmm. that I got to put on some tangy lipstick. Well, they still make it, and you can order it from really people on the internet. You should get some. Really. I did. Did you? I did because mm -hmm. I couldn't believe that and it was they were the still same. making it. It's still the same brand. It still smells the same, and it still does the same thing when you put it on. Uh -huh. All right, and that's what you wear now. No, <laughs> no, it's not what I'm wearing now. But, but. Um, but for fun, when you want to have some fun, sometimes that's what you wear. Well, I couldn't believe it because I, you know, some companies specialize in old time candy and old time mm -hmm. stuff, and I think this was Vermont, Vermont Country Store. Uh -huh. So they carry all kinds of old stuff that had been around that you can't get anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So, in case you're looking for tangy lipstick, if you remember when you were a little girl, you know where to get it. You, there's a place to get it, and it's fresh. It's not old stuff from the fifties. <laughs> it's recently made, <laughs> so it had developed a lot of bacteria or something. Whatever. There's a lot of great old stuff from the sixties, mm -hmm. from the fifties. I mean, a lot of. Speaking of, have you ever? Do you watch any like cable TV or? Well, now that I've moved into Casey Waters, they have cable. Oh. Not cable. Um, well, you might get this too, but American Movie Classics has a program called Mad Men, and it's it's in the early '60s. Mm -hmm. It's it's like a slice from the early '60s, mm -hmm. based on uh, uh, Madison Avenue advertising. Uh huh. And. And it's a wicked bad program. They're in reruns now, but oh, I'm like hooked on it. They're bad. <laughs> wicked bad, because the, it, oh my gosh, all it's this crazy, so all, sexist, all the, <laughs> so the, sexist. All the crazy ads that used to be too. Yeah, yeah and they're always smoking and mm -hmm. and like yeah. you know it. It's sure. like it's it must be kind of based on a real uh, former ad agency because they're trying to figure out how to get around the fact that. Uh, uh, that the FDA has come out and said you can't advertise anymore that doctors say smoking is good for you and stuff like that. <laughs> so they're trying to figure out, well, well, okay, how can I market cigarettes if, mm -hmm. if, if they're giving people cancer? Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, how do we get around that? Mm -hmm. And so they've come up with a thing, well, well, even though it gives you cancer, people love to smoke. <laughs> so, I just love doing it. And it worked, didn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it worked yes, really well. yes. I know. I knew so. See, I lived in Winston Salem. That's uh -huh. where I grew up, was in yeah. Winston Salem. So, I knew I knew those people. I knew all the people from the tobacco company. I knew the chemists mm -hmm. that worked in the tobacco uh -huh. company, and they knew that stuff. And I had occasion to work for some of those people, one in particular. And these guys were sold out. You know, they made good money, and but the, but they knew the real story, and they were sold. They but they were company guys, and and looking back on on my whole experience, particularly with one of them who who was one of the main chemists working for Reynolds Tobacco Company, and he he knew the whole story. He knew what every chemical in there was, and he knew what it was doing to people. And he was completely sold out, and he was a completely a company man. And he, and my whole experience with having worked for him, is extremely negative. I was, you know, I was working for someone very evil. I really was. I mean, if you know that kind of thing, and and you do it, that's evil. And and when and when I went, I'll tell you the story. I won't I won't say the name of the company or the man, but I went to work for. A, it was a music store, and they were the, um, uh, they were, they they carried a lot of brands, you know, major brands like Fender and, and stuff like that. That's where I, I worked on a lot of Bob, Bob Moog's circuits because uh, they, they uh, sold Thomas Organ, which was mm -hmm. also the, the Vox and, uh, and the Moog synthesizers and stuff. So, um, when I, and when I went to work for this man, and I, I walked into his back room, uh, he had not had a technician for some year, well, no, for, for, I don't know, maybe a year or maybe six months, a long time. And, 
and and they were the warranty station for a lot of these products and the back room was piled up literally almost to the ceiling and there were just there were just uh like uh pathways that you could walk between equipment that was in there to be repaired and stacked to the ceiling rows of it back there and nobody to fix it and so the guy was in a pretty desperate situation so he gave me a deal where i he said i i could come and go on my own hours and i got half of the labor charge on the repair bill you know and it was and that was a pretty good deal because yeah, it sounds like it was a long-term job <laughs> yeah and so it took me like a year or something to get it to get that stack down to mm-hmm. where if somebody was 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 brought something in they could come back later this week and pick it up and mm-hmm. be fixed mm-hmm. you know and but it took a long time to get it down to that because i was i was starting with stuff that was six, six months behind yeah you know so finally when i got it down to that level and it was working the way it should work you know and i was very happy with my job you know and he called me into his office one day and he said i want to make you a deal he says i want to make you a new deal and i want uh, i want you to work um, a, a, a regular 40 hour week the re- you know, regular hours you know open in time to whatever and that kind of stuff you know um and and i and i want to pay you a regular hourly ra- wage which worked out to be about half what i was making on regular hours and he told me this though this is what has always stood out in my mind because i'm thinking what is the advantage to this? And, and, and he volunteered that information. He says, he says, it will make you a better citizen. This was, this was supposed to be my encouragement to, to take his deal, was to, to, to start working more hours and more inconvenient hours. To for me, less money. For half the money, right? And this was going to make me a better citizen. Now, this is the guy who was the chemist at... At, um, at the tobacco company and, and, and knew he was killing people, what chemicals he was putting in them. So he also owned a, a music store? He did. That, he, 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 had, he had to invest his money in a business, you see, as a tax shelter and what have you. And that was the business he had invested in. You, you see how, I mean, this dude well, was, see, was, he so was the, making what, some what money. What it was was he had problem with his piled up stuff that he needed to get, get, get out of there. Right. And as long as you had the stuff to do, the repairs to do, mm-hmm. everything was going okay and he was taking care of his problem. But as soon as you got everything fixed, then he gave you an offer that you had to refuse. Well, no. he No, he really wanted me to take the offer. He wanted. No, he wanted you to refuse the offer. I, I think he did it to get you out of there because oh. you'd done the job. You'd gotten rid of his problem. He gave you an offer. Well, then he, he gave you an no, offer that, that, you couldn't, that you couldn't take. No, that would, that would, I took it. That was a mistake I made. Oh, you took it? Yeah, and, my, and, and life was, was hell from that point on because I didn't want to be out of a job. Oh, heck. You see he what I mean? took it. Yeah, that's a mistake I, I don't make anymore. Now, when people make me a, if people if people make an offer to me, and then they come back two weeks later and they have a different offer, which which equals I well, make were less you, money. Were you were you were you a lot younger then? Were you a lot oh, younger? Oh yeah, I was. And, I, was and kind of I was. I was. I was right out of school. Right. Right. Yeah, I, I was. You were just. I, you were just young and had yeah, to learn. Right. I had. Yeah. I had come. I had come right right out of, out of electronics engineering and design technology, mm-hmm. and I was like whiz bang. Mm-hmm. And and all electronics. Well, did and, you see that uh, movie uh, about Jeffrey Wigand's? Mm-hmm. Was it was it The Informer about one of the executives? Oh yeah, yeah. It was uh-huh. with, it was one of the early exactly. Russell Crowe movies? It's, it's right, right. But he was oh. a, he wasn't Reynolds Tobacco Company though. You know, he, was he was American, a, wasn't he? He was up in Virginia. That mm-hmm. one in Virginia. Yeah. Is it American Tobacco? Or, no, I don't or, think it was that. I don't know which one it was, but boy, that was a good movie, and boy, it was or real Morris revealing. Or something. It was yeah. It's something I can't remember which which one. Brown and Williams. I can't remember. I think it was Brown and Williams. Okay. I, yeah, I remember. I re- yeah, yeah. I knew when but, all that happened. Yeah. Um, see, see, we pay attention to that stuff in Winston Salem. <laughs> yeah. Even when if it's when game spilled the beans. Mm-hmm. Right when he spilled the beans, I mean, there. Were, but I lived amongst people who knew that. Yeah. All that stuff. Yes. And didn't spill the.